Hi everybody, we've been looking at what inflation is and what can cause inflation and now we're going to look at what are the costs of inflation, so the negative things about inflation occurring. We know that inflation is a sustained increase in the average price level. So the first problem that we can have is that people's incomes are going to buy less products. If the price of things is going up and incomes stay the same, then this will mean that when people go to the shops, they won't be able to buy as much. So if incomes do not increase at the same rate, a fall in the value of money. So people's money won't be worth as much. They won't be able to buy as much with their money. If you're lucky enough for your income to increase at the same rate as inflation, we say that your income is index linked. And that means that it moves with inflation. So if inflation is 2%, your income would go up by 2%. And we have to remember as here, when we're talking about incomes, we can be talking about people's wages, but also it might be somebody's pension, or it may be the benefits that someone's receiving from the government. And if these don't increase at the same rate as inflation, then that will mean that the value of the money that someone is receiving will be decreasing. And we'd say that their real income has decreased. Remember that real means taking away the effect of inflation. So because of the inflation and because their income has stayed the same, in real terms, their income has gone down. They can't buy as much. The second one is uncertainty in general in the economy. And this uncertainty is exactly what businesses absolutely hate. Businesses want there to be certainty about everything. They want to know what's going to happen in the future. And if there's a possibility that your costs as a business are going to be very high in the future, then it's unlikely that you're going to want to invest in capital. You won't want to buy new machinery because you'll be worried that you won't be able to afford to repay your loan. You might not be able to afford to use the machinery. You might not be able to afford to buy the raw materials that you need to use for your business. So if there's inflation in the economy, that will make businesses think that the inflation might carry on. Therefore, they'll be uncertain and they're less likely to invest. A third problem that we can have is that the inflation itself can cause more inflation. If you imagine that you are looking for a new TV and you walk past a shop every day on your way to work and you see a TV for sale and the first time you see it it's a hundred pounds the next time you see it the next day it's a hundred and twenty pounds it's exactly the same TV the next day you walk past and it's a hundred and thirty pounds what's going to happen is there's a lot of inflation going on here this person who wants to buy a TV they will want to buy now right now and if there's inflation for a lot of products in an economy a lot of people are going to be thinking like this about a lot of products and if lots of people buy things now this will cause consumption to go up now and this will cause aggregate demand to go up now and we know that if we're running out of spare capacity and aggregate demand goes up this itself is going to lead to demand pull inflation. So actually having inflation can cause more inflation. The fourth problem that we have if we've got inflation is that it can randomly, sort of in a funny way sometimes, redistribute income between people and it can affect people's real income in different ways. Some people when they see the inflation coming they'll ask for higher wages and they might have a lot of wage bargaining power, particularly if they are part of a union. So unions campaign for workers' rights. And if you're in a strong union, then maybe you have the ability to get higher wages when inflation happens. And therefore, your income will be keeping up with the inflation more and you'll be less badly affected by the inflation. However, if you don't have wage bargaining power, and your income stays the same, 
while the average price level is going up, you're going to really find that your real income is falling. So this can be unfair between different people. The next thing is there's a big difference between the impact of inflation on savers and on borrowers. Let's imagine that this person has saved £100. This person has borrowed £100. And let's imagine that we've got inflation so that the price of a sandwich in this country has gone from £2 for a sandwich, now it's £100 for a sandwich. So what's happened for this person who saved all of this money? They've saved £100. When they saved the money, they would have felt quite happy because they thought, I've saved £100, that's enough to buy 50 lunches perhaps. But now this person's savings will only buy one sandwich. So for this person, the value of their savings has gone down. And this person's going to be really upset and sad about this. So inflation is very bad for savers. And very often pensioners will be living off their savings. So they can be particularly badly affected by this. Then let's look at the person who's borrowed some money. So they've borrowed £100 and when they took out the loan for £100 they might have been quite worried, they thought it's quite a lot of money to borrow £100 and for instance it will buy me 50 sandwiches, 50 lunches with my £100 that I've borrowed. But they might have this on their mind that they've got to pay back the £100. However, if we have this inflation and now one sandwich is worth £100, now this person only owes the value of one sandwich. So they are going to be quite happy because suddenly the value of their debt has decreased. So the money that they owe isn't worth as much as it was before and therefore they're going to be happy. So this is looking at different people and how they will be affected by inflation and you can see that there can be some people who really suffer more than others because of the inflation. The next thing to look at is administrative costs. This is largely for businesses and administration or admin, or in this case administrative things that have to be done. This is where businesses have to do day-to-day -day tasks to deal with the fact that there is the inflation. So for example, they might be spending time changing their product specifications. Because let's imagine that the price of some of their ingredients like cocoa and eggs are becoming more expensive. If they make cakes, they might be a cake manufacturer. They might be spending time changing the ingredients so that they aren't spending as much money on their ingredients if overall prices are going up. And there are many things businesses will have to be doing to adapt to the inflation, particularly if there's a lot of inflation and prices are changing rapidly and their costs are changing rapidly. I'm going to link this one over to here as well. Menu costs. This is the terminology that we use for businesses, again, that are having to change their prices. And these are the prices listed for all of their products. It might be on a menu. So a restaurant would have to change all the prices because the business's costs will be going up and therefore the prices are going up and they have to change the prices on the menu. But also, if you are selling things online, you'd have to input all of the new prices for your products. Within a shop, all the tags that there are on the shelves, they would all need to be changed. This is easier nowadays with barcodes because items are scanned with the barcode, but still the new price will have to be inputted somewhere on a software system. So this is a cost to businesses of inflation. Something which is related to the problems and sort of the headache that's created by inflation is shoe leather costs. And shoe leather costs can be for consumers and they can be for firms. The reason these are called shoe leather costs is because shoes that's a shoe. In the past, often the bottom of the shoe was made of leather. And if you're having to shop around and look for the cheapest 
cost products, raw materials for your business, or as a consumer, you're having to shop around to find the cheapest TV, because prices are going up rapidly, you're going to be spending time and money searching for the lowest price. And we call this shoe leather costs, because in the past, people would have been walking from shop to shop to find the cheapest item. So if they needed to buy a loaf of bread, they might have gone to four shops to find the cheapest loaf of bread because prices are going up so quickly. And these costs of shopping around for the cheapest item are relevant for consumers and for firms as well. Next, loss of international competitiveness. We know that if we have inflation, we know this means that on average, prices are going up. And this is for domestic products. So things made, for example, here in the UK are more expensive. If that's the case, then this will be make our exports more expensive. And if our exports are more expensive, we will export less probably. People abroad won't want our products as much because they'll be more expensive. So we won't be as competitive internationally. And this could harm our net trade. We may, as a result, export less. And also, we might import more. Because if the price of our things domestically in the UK is very expensive, imports might be cheaper than the things we're making. And therefore, we might import more. So two things here, exporting less, potentially importing more. The final negative that we're going to look at is a wage price spiral. This is an issue that can arise because we've got inflation. So for people who are buying things every day, they're struggling because things are more expensive in the shops. So what they do is they ask for a pay rise from their employer. They say that I can't afford to buy as much now with my income because prices are going up. So they ask for a pay rise. If they receive a pay rise, this means that the costs of businesses rise because they're paying their workers more. So the costs for the businesses rise. If the costs for the businesses rise, that causes them to have to put their prices up so that they can cover the higher costs. And if they're putting their prices up, we're back to square one. This is inflation, if lots of businesses are doing this. So then, because of the inflation, people ask for higher pay. That increases the business's costs. They put prices up, and so on. This is a spiral, and it can make inflation get worse and worse. So these are the main costs of inflation. And in an exam, you might have to talk about one or more of these and explain how it works and give an example.